Hello. Welcome to uh, everyone who welcome to everyone who is watching the webinar. Uh, my name is Diana Chile. I am a VLAN expert and I host the webinars for developers. Uh, yes, yeah, we are back and we continue the series of webinars dedicated to uh, VLAN uh, API. However, I must say that today's webinars is last one. We are going to sum up the entire webinar series. Well, uh, recap, we will recap previous webinars and go over uh, the fundamental principles of the Alon API. And of course, we will practice and learn how to create a simple single page app, just like fleet overview. Uh, we will review once more uh, about our entire process from login uh, to obtaining the data. As we go, I will demonstrating and present a presentation with the key uh, information, and later it will be available for you to use. Uh, the second part, as usual, is about practice. Uh, we will look how to create a simple app. Uh, simple app and how can you use these templates for your task. You can also ask questions in the chat box of the live stream and I will answer them at the end of our meeting. So let's start. We launch a series of webinars de dedicated to VLON API and SDK development last year. All of them, you can find it on our YouTube channel. And if you haven't watched it yet or would like to watch again some episodes, you are free to do it anytime. Uh, in total, we hosted 10 webinars, five in Russian and five in English. Moreover, uh, additionally, we streamed a pilot episode about, uh, about topic, external JavaScript basics, three frills to it, we are learned quickly. During this webinar, I showed how it's possible uh, to customize the own interface to add, for example, banners on login page or additional icons or customize menu or even a chart. Uh, this episode includes examples of ready use code. All information you can find in links below in the description under this video. We created a series of webinars to show you that it's not so difficult uh, to start developing for VLON, to create uh, your own unique uh, application for VLON. I show you that even for persons such I, who are not a developer, it's possible to write a simple code which will work, which will work in practice ensure more experienced developers, professionals uh, won't have any problems at all. The point is uh, that to understand the uh, principles, the basic principles of VLAN API. Uh, as usual, um, developers who write code, who, who create additional applications for VLAN, uh, are not system active users, so well structure and many concepts are new to them. That is why it's sometimes difficult them to understand the API, how to use it correctly, which request, which uh, data then that can they can get. In our webinars, we try to spotlight such complicated issues that can be difficult to understand. Hopefully we manage step by step each problem and cover all process at all. Let's see what we have covered already. The first topic we discussed was the authorization mechanism in Vialo. Since October 2015, Vialo has been using a protected authorization mechanism based on OAuth principle. 
With this method, you can log in into the system using a unique token. Users can get token only through a special authorization form after they enter their username and password correctly. The authorization form is protected with a unique signature and can be used only from trusted DNS located on the Vialon server. I mean DNS for your monitoring site. The token has various properties such as activation time, duration, access rights, name, and so on. Let's talk about the most important of them. Duration. A token's duration is 30 days by default, but you can assign any value. The value is in seconds. You can also create a token with endless duration. Duration equals zero. But in this case, please remember, you will have to log in into the system at least once in 100 days. Expiry tokens are removed from the system. Token rights. Token rights, parameter access type. When you log in into the website using a token, both user rights and token rights are taken into account. It means that token rights can restrict user rights and only reduce user access, or you can leave them unchanged. Uh, for this, you just need to specify the correct value for access type. For example, access, access type equals minus one means that user will have the same access as he has in system. One user can have more cannot have more than 1,000 tokens at the same time. Please note about it, because if uh, the user has more than 1,000 tokens, it's not possible to log in into the system. There, there are the main and most important properties of the token. You can find all this information and more detailed description at our documentation. And also we can find more information about authorization form, how to uh, embed it to your site, how to use it and etc. Uh, please uh, find the link to the guide on the authorization mechanism in Verlon uh, in the video below, in the description below on the video. As soon as the authorization has been completed successfully, you can uh, send any API request that you need. Let's look about the basic requests. First, we will talk about search item or search items, uh, which uh, I think is uh, the basic request which you need to know. We can use different type of requests depending on what items or information we need to get and depending on whatever we know the item ID or not. You can get a lot of useful information with this request. You just need to use the right value for the flex parameter in the request. You can find the description of all these values in the chapter data format in the documentation. We will also give the link to it in the description below the video. Let's look at some examples. I will show you on my screen. I will use uh, the special tool Sw uh, Swagger, Inspector Swagger, and just you can see about a request core search items. Core search items allow us to find uh, several elements. For example, here we will find a value unit, units with uh, with the following criteria: uh, name, sysname, unique ID, unique ID of the unit, and phone number. Uh, the name was as mask Volvo. Unique ID uh, starts as from these numbers and the same for the form. You can specify any data, any values that you need. 
So just, and here we just need to specify uh, flux, flux, uh, which uh, flex, flex value means which data you will get from the server in JSON re response. For example, one means just the basic information. Let's just do it. I send the request and I see that system return me eight elements with my which uh, is um, uh, with corresponding criteria which I specified in request and uh, the basic information is, is just unit name unit id uh, and uh, access rights for uh, user under which I login so uh, more examples you can find in documentation uh, also if you uh, don't understand or would like uh, to know about some special examples of in in your for your task you can write uh, any questions on our forum uh let's move again let's move let's move let's move another basic request is core batch with this request you can run several other requests at the same time for example there can be several request search items with the criteria set of the for different items. Uh, let's see how the format of this request looks like. Uh, I can see you on my screen. Also, I can the same execute this request again. Let me. Okay, I will find from my, oh, maybe here I have, I just copy my current seat. Okay, let's try to execute it. I think it will be successful. Send it, yes, it will successful. In this case, uh, uh, I used uh, both request search items, but uh, in first request, I specify to search a well, unit units, and uh, in other request, I specify for search items to find for me to find for me core search items uh, to find for me items type a value resource. So is uh, it's not possible to specify at one request core search item different uh, elements type. So I need use a core batch and uh, to execute at one time to request find units and find resource. Sure, I can do it step by step uh, of each request, uh, execute each request step by step, but for example, I need to uh, get JSON response with all data, with data about units and data about resource at one response. So here you can find that Total items count five, we can see uh, for uh, the system returns me five units and returns me only fine resource. That's all. So it's very useful request and it's not, mm, it's not difficult formats for this. You just specify a massive of uh, request, of request of comments name, and then uh, apply the same parameters for params uh, as uh, the request uh, have. Okay, let's move on. Uh, of course, running a report, getting messages, configuring item, say, item settings, edit uh, or resolving can be also called a basic request. Uh, in general, any API request is necessary and fundamental, but it all depends on your task. And if we talk about most important and uh, most frequently used requests, this is their search items and batch requests. So uh, I advise you to use this request to know about it. Uh, let me say a couple of words about remote API method events methods. At one of our webinars, we covered the following requests. Events update units and events check updates. Events load, events get, and events unload. 
Uh, this request can be used as alternative method for getting data from records, such as trip, engine hours, fillings, thefts, uh, sensors, values. I spoke about the events mechanism in more detail in another webinar, so I will not repeat that again. Uh, let's just look at the combination of requests one more time. Events update units and events check updates are used to get online data, such as current events, for example, trip, and get the most recent valid sensor values. The other group, events load, events get, and events unload, are used to get historical data and events just like running a report. First, you load the necessary types of events through the request events load, then you get the data through the request events get, based on the digitalization flag value in the request. These two requests can be run together uh, in a single request events load with a slight changes of format or in the request query batch. At the webinar, I also explained in detail when and what variant is better to use. Uh, the following topics that we touch open were related to Vialon JavaScript API. I also decided to tell a little bit about Vialon JS um, because I write all my web application templates in JavaScript using Vialon JS functions. And this is really handy and most likely, likely that many developers use JavaScript, especially for web interface as well. Let's recall what we have discussed. Here is a script connection to enable Vialon JS function. Uh, it's a necessary uh, library to work Vialon JS. Uh, in addition, uh, by these scripts, a value when request will be sent automatically. They are needed to maintain the session too. Uh, let me remind you that a session lasts for five minutes after the last request has been sent. And to obtain session, you can execute any IP request or just execute such simple available request for uh, periodically, for example, every two, three sec or every one, two minutes. Vialon Playground is a great and very useful tool with code samples. It's a sandbox where you can run your code, download files with examples, and save, and save code samples in separate threads. Embedding examples for authorization forms. A couple of interesting and useful GS methods how to use them better and their special features. Let's look through some method, some method, some JS methods. The load library method for downloading necessary libraries. You can see the syntax of this methods, uh, method in the slide. It's simple. Next useful method. The get item and get item methods for getting data about an item, an item. Uh, the slide shows the parameter that these methods take. The next method uh, I would like to remind the removed call method for executing removed request to the server. And is a method to run any API request that you need. Its, syn is, its syntax is also simple and you can see its, its, its description in the slide. Uh, I will speak about this method today because I use them for my web app example. In my opinion, the following sequence of actions is fundamental for any developing for Vialo. Authorization with a token, taking into account its duration and rights, logging into the system, start an active session, and running of the required API requests. API requests are run as a removed HTTP request by POST method or through Vialon JavaScript functions. In any quest, a request is sent to Vialon server and you get a response from the server in JSON format containing necessary data. 
practice is always better than theory, so let's move to practice. I'm going to show you an example of my simple web application. Uh, it's just about fleet summary uh, and statistic maybe. Uh, I'll give you templates, ideas, and variants how you can use and mod modify these scripts, these ideas uh, to your task, or you can create something absolutely different. By any way, you will have to take all steps from the brief guide I mentioned above. So let's open my script. Mm -hmm. You can see this. So we log in, we log in, log in, log in, we log in to my script. And first, uh, which we can see that here I use welcome and uh, and apply username, user the own username. Uh, then it's like a simple menu with some uh, with some points. Uh, for example, just overview about uh, all total information. Like for example, accidents uh, account of units which have accidents, free drivers, uh, free drivers which are not uh, running uh, on on unit now, active units which sends the data recently, uh, and total units under my account. Uh, some uh, someone prediction statistics you can uh, specify here. And then let's go to our tabs. For example, if we click drivers, we can see here the information from report, from drivers report. Uh, there are several information from a report, but uh, from events method, we can get here. I click trips and just I use another way to open a new uh, a new page. And here, this example uh, on webinar about events, I have I have showed and explains in detail. So I just click, for example, this unit. Let's see. Oh, this unit has uh, some trips, uh, some. Uh, private trips and some delivery trips. Then if I click here, I can get detailed information about trips, stops, more detailed information. So you can create something like this if you need uh, such report up. Again, let's back to our, uh, the interesting uh, menu is best drivers. Here we just get information about our drivers, about our uh, driver's behavior, uh, their, uh, the value of, here, of their behavior. And here is we get some information about driver's activity. Uh, maybe some of you know that it's possible to get driver's activity for, uh, on Vialon uh, by uh, Tachograph data or by just using uh, binding and trips for units, binding drivers and unit trips, and get information about uh, dr driver's activity, uh, which driver are running, uh, running the car, which driver are working, which driver are rest, and so on. So uh, later I will see which parameters I, which parameters can be used for this. And you, you can create a similar, for example, pop-up as Invialon or something unique uh, for your task. And just general stats, like calculated time, for example, fleet efficiency, fleet growth, exceeding percent, and so on. So uh, the main idea, uh, a little bit later, I will open the code that I just execute some remote call request get JSON response from server, and then uh, modify my HTML page with this data. That's all. OK, let's open Let's open them, the script. First, we will open the login page, uh, the, the HTML page. Uh, here, I find some another way. Uh, I use uh, a special block, a special tag template 
to get my template here. So if you if you remember, uh, first I get login page. I need to get uh, login page, for example, to login. But then I would like to replace uh, login HTML content for uh, my template. And just in in previous my examples, uh, I just used uh, to replace uh, HTML content to delete or skip old one and create new one uh, by online. Uh, but now I use some other method. I just use tag template and this tag uh, will activate it after my login function. So just, uh, just any template, which you can also apply here, just execute some functions. And uh, that's, I think, all maybe just about script in the end. Yes, I just use this uh, connection of my script, my JavaScript. So let's open JavaScript. Uh, this just, I use a simple um, way to save token in local storage. That is why uh, I doesn't need to type my login password uh, again because I was I was doing it later. Okay, just token login. And then uh, after we have token, uh, valid token for user, uh, we can uh, we can log in to we can log in, uh, execute login function, login request to Vialon. Here I use uh, Vialon JavaScript uh, functions, and uh, as a callback function, I call any function my first function. Here you can see init function. Uh, it's just here just about some special uh, CSS uh, rules for templates, uh, but more interesting uh, we find here that you can see that uh, I, re I replace, uh, I activate my template code, my template, my template block. And then I also execute function get main info uh, to get my main information. Uh, first, uh, first, just uh, I need uh, to search my avail my, my units to get my units. For this one, I just execute request search items uh, and using a method remote call. You can see uh, the, that here I just specify the name of request for research items, params, this, this params, required params, and then I execute a function uh, callback uh, to get information from a result from JSON response uh, of server and proceed this information. Just for example, I call um, function get, get country to get information about addresses. And then here, for example, I take for each items which will be find a parameter post, parameter post, uh, parameter post for position where you can find speed, um, sets count, satellite count. Uh, time and other information. Also, for example, in parameter, in property parameter LMSCG, you can find, it means last message, and you can find all message, all parameters of which uh, unit uh, sent, sent to server. Uh, this uh, reply uh, depends on the flex value. You can see that I will sum up the required flex value. For example, base flag returns basic information about unit name and internal ID. Information, uh, this value returns about last messages and so on. Uh, all value in decimal format and you can find at section 
data format in documentation description for all these uh, flags and which values which mean. Okay, and next, I also execute the next request for research items, but in this case, I would like to find a value resource and I specify this value to get drivers from my resource, to, to get drivers information. You can see that this information I can find in parameter, in parameter devrel C. And here uh, I can count my drivers. And also, uh, what's interesting, I can count this information. And the same, I can find any information about drivers' names or something else. Uh, the same as for search items unit. Uh, you can specify any flag values to get uh, information about resource elements like geofences, um, notifications, jobs, passengers, drivers' reports. All information you can find by this request. Okay, let's check what we do. For example, let's, re let's move to our here. Uh, to our dashboard menu, you can see that, for example, uh, when I click drivers, uh, I call function get drivers and for let's look at this function at my code get drivers, get drivers info, get drivers info. Sorry, let's start. Get drivers here. One. Yeah, let's get drivers info. Uh, for in this function, I just execute a request. Exit, exact report to get reports from the server. Uh, the reports I have already created. The report is about um, report templates about drivers uh, with their uh, with their trips and their um, with their violations and their violations uh, like echo driving echo driving reports. So here I just execute these reports. I passed the all parameters which need to execute for my reports. Uh, and then in callback function, I call additional function get report drivers to get a result from report reports. So just when you execute report, you get only like how many tables the report have, how many uh, rows and etc. And more, more detailed information, each rows, information from each rows, you can need to execute additional request. In our case, get report drives, we will execute uh, the request, select result rows, just to get information about each rows. And as you can see, uh, for most function, most function I called without parameters like get drivers info. Uh, but this function I called with parameter L, which means how many rows contain uh, the report contains. Because after execution report, I can get in result from several the table rows. Uh, here I know just that one I have one table. Uh, that is why I specify index zero. Uh, just note um, the index, like in language and like in pro programming languages, uh, started with zero. So first table has index zero, uh, second table has index one, and etc. So I specify jar the index zero, and then specify rows to get how many rows in the table. And here I pass this value. So I already just know how many string, how many rows I need to create for my uh, web page. Uh, I execute the same. It's my lovely method remote call because you can, using remote call, you can execute any API request, any well on API request. Uh, I just execute and then I create for each rows, I get information. Uh, information I can get from parameter C. Parameter C means like row and parameter, uh, the index for this parameter mean, means uh, the index of column. 
So here also I know the which columns I need to proceed. So uh, I have already known the, about indexes. And then I just create several uh, several uh, pair elements, pair blocks elements for my web page with different information. Here is like driver name here, trip uh, st trip time beginning, trip time end. Here is penalty and score. And here just a status um, in my report. It's about um, custom census value. So you can see the result. I click drivers. Uh, uh, please note, uh, as report uh, needs to some time to execute on server. So uh, you will see a little bit loading, yes? And you can see the same on the interface, where just we push uh, the special icon that the process is loading and also it's possible uh, to execute report like in background form uh, to the, to allow users to do something on interface uh, if you open when you execute a report on the on web interface you can open a console and see a list of methods uh, how to implement it how this algorithm implemented uh, so it's about report. Uh, the, what about drivers? Uh, interesting. Uh, the another feature is uh, best drivers. If we go again to my code, we can see that uh, for best drivers, I called function get best drivers. Let's find here. Let's find here my best drivers. Where are my best drivers? Yeah. And here the same. I use uh, the same report, the same uh, request to execution report, but just with another template for, of report. And but the method is the same. Uh, Execute report, then select rows, and then put information from C parameter to on our web page. Uh, the most interesting, uh, the other interesting uh, method is my function get drivers news. In this case, I will show you. Here is used last messages from 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 drivers. I just named it, and here I get some information about driver's activity. Uh, for this case, I haven't uh, executed report access. I can get this information from request search items. I just need to search items, avail resource, and returns the information about drivers. And this value means that server will returns me information about the drivers for this resource. Sure, it be, can be several resources. I just use only one, my resource, uh, just for example. And then uh, when we get, when we remote call, we execute remote API call, and we get driver's information, driver's information in parameter driver C. And here in parameter infer, you can find information about driver activity. Uh, let's look how it's look on VLON. For example, our drivers. Yeah, you can see this, uh, this pop up without information of driver activity. Uh, you know, this driver activity is based on uh, strict rules. And we have uh, these uh, rules more, these rules are worked most uh, only for, um, for uh, some countries, for example, like Russia, Belarus, uh, maybe sometimes in Europe too, but some, uh, sometimes some, some country can have um, other rules with different, um, with a little bit difference. For example, uh, the rest not, um, 10 hours, but 12 hours. So, for example, the working time uh, during uh, only six or seven hours. So, you can use this 
para these parameters about driver's activity to add your own uh, pop-up in your app, for example, or add your own uh, reports uh, based on calculations, on your calculations or spe specific calculations for some local place or for some country. We can open SDK documentation and here that data format section, which I mentioned above, resource, we can see the flags, all flags values, which they means, the description. And here we, we find drivers, drivers, here one. We can see the information which we can get uh, about our drivers. Uh, sure, we can get ID, phone number, description, name, and etc. And also we can get these parameter info, parameters for analysis, infringements of work and rest of drivers by Yeter, by Yeter rules here. Uh, unfortunately, these, the rules like the violation, the servers is not calculated by itself. So the web, uh, our web interface uh, calculates by itself uh, using these values. For example, like here, let's say, oh no, where, where's my driver with uh, violations? Oh, I, I find, uh, oh, well, yes, uh, uh, MNX. Like here, for example, the beginning time rest uh, missed is calculated by web applications. So you can do something similar if you need to. Okay, what's uh, interesting? Also, I would like to tell you, uh, no, just maybe about uh, function uh, by which I get username. Let's look at our script. Get report data, update info logout, get some, get user. It just function get user. I just get user for this function. I also uh, pass the parameter div. Uh, I mean, this diff is the, the place where I will put my the user value username. And just when I, and here I used a value JavaScript methods uh, for current sessions, I just get current user, current user, and then just uh, apply method get name to get username. So it's simple. Uh, maybe that's all as I would like to tell you, to show you, uh, to show you a simple a template of app, uh, which as you see can write a uh, person who are not a developer. So um, such, such, such similar app, or maybe uh, the best one and the may, more unique, uh, sure it is possible to write for any developers. So let me, Maybe check the chat. Yes. Uh, hopefully, uh, I give you enough examples and templates and uh, show different variants how to use them. Uh, the most is important things is clear to you how to process the data, how to log into system, start to session, and then gain get data and process it. Um, you can have other task, other needs. Uh, you can get a, you can get any your own data, but the principles are always the same. Uh, let me see if there's any questions in the chat. Sorry, I will open chat. Mm -hmm. uh, John asked, uh, is the web application script available somewhere so we can look at it was done? Yeah, sure. Uh, all examples and all scripts are available. The link uh, will be in the description on the video. Also, if you uh, cannot find something, for example, maybe for some previous webinar, uh, which examples I show, uh, you can write on forum to ask and I will reshare and give you a proper link. 
Okay. I think there is not any questions. Uh, so I think it's just uh, that everything is clear and um, understandable. Uh, so let's just me remind you once again that you can watch all our webinars on YouTube channel. Uh, also, there is a forum thread where you, you can discuss uh, different issues or any webinars topics, as I mentioned above. You will find all necessary links in the video in the description below under this video. Uh, also, please note about Please know, please don't forget about our developers forum, develop, developers forum thread, where you can ask any um, questions about Velon API SDK to our developers directly. I or our uh, developers uh, will answer. Uh, we try to answer as fast as possible. Sometimes, sometimes maybe with some delay because due to a huge loading of work. Oh, but in any case, we will answer. Uh, also, you will find the link to the forum in the description below. If you want uh, another webinar on a specific topic, please write us uh, to at marketing at gurton.com. After a webinar, please fill a feedback form. Please leave your feedback on the previous webinars, what topic, are interesting and important for you. Maybe you would like to listen more details about some topics um, for future webinar, which we can apply uh, these topics for our future webinars. The link is under the video. Also, you will find you will receive the email with a feedback form, so you can do it later. We are not saying goodbye. We will keep on creating webinars for technical specialists and developers. Follow us for more updates, both on websites and, and our blog. Thank you. Thank you again for watching my webinars. Have a good evening. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.